I sometimes share PP bro or the passport bro content, but what are the women on the other side, you know, from their perspective, what are they thinking? This person said um, on one of my YouTube pages, she says, in the Philippines, marrying a PP bro is the fastest way out of poverty. We're still a third world country, no matter what people say. These ladies, no judgment on them, will really turn their lives around together with their families using the PP bros money, thinking he hit the jackpot. These losers will boast on how Western women are poop and Asian women are the best to wife up because we're submissive. Little did they know we're literally using them as well for their money. Oftentimes, being with a white man is a status symbol in third world countries. This will elevate a local woman's social and financial status. Sometimes they get their green card and will literally stay through thick and thin until that PP bro perishes and she will get all of his fortune. Seriously, it's hilarious. There's no genuine love. Their eyes aren't set out um, to the prize. I'm sorry, their eyes are set out to the prize and I don't blame them. These men are misogynistic towards women that don't serve them, um, yet they still need women to clean up after them and bang them occasionally. I will never judge wives of PP bros. I only see them getting their coin. They are never the problem. It's these sex pets and PP bros that are pet predatory, taking advantage of underprivileged women overseas. Rob and steal from them if you have to get your coins. So that is one woman's perspective. So this is another woman. She she talked to me. She was talking to me in my inbox. She says, personally, I hate the PP bros with a passion since I'm from one of their target countries. They're afraid that my country, the Philippines, is getting westernized because of all of the PP bros going here. So they target women from unprivileged places in the country. So they're not liberals basically personally picking their brides, although some of those women will thrive, some of them get used, abused, or unalive. There's a there's a lot of local single mothers here because of these LBHs, losers back home, we call them, especially places near the U.S. military or Navy base. It's heartbreaking. Our country is being um, a an SEX destination and more younger local women from poverty are being exploited. So thank you for posting about PP bros. They think they're not sex pets or engaging in SEX tourism, but they are. So this is what two women personally said about what they see as women actually from the Philippines. So now to a passport bro post. This man says, the difference in treatment abroad is staggering. I just want to talk about my difference in experience in dating in the U.S. versus the Philippines. In the Philippines, I have tons of options. I can go on a date with a new girl every day if I wanted to, ones I actually find attractive. Because of this, I feel no need to settle, and I also have a much easier time enforcing boundaries. If a woman is mistreating me, I have zero thoughts about showing her the door because I know I could be dating a new girl tomorrow if I wanted to. In the U.S., the amount of effort just to get a three is far from worth it. And because it's so hard for many men to get a date, it gives the women a ton of leverage. In the Philippines, dating is, dating is fun. It feels far more like two individuals seeing if they're compatible compared to the U.S. where it feels like I have to prove my worth to a woman and entertain her like a dancing monkey. If anything, many women go out of their way to try to impress me. The women in the Philippines are far more feminine and nurturing. A few examples. When I was a, when I was a recent arrival, I was bringing a girl up to my room unexpectedly. Date went better than anticipated. And I knew my room was a bit dirty because I wasn't expecting any visitors. I told my date on the way up that the room might be a bit dirty. And she says, don't worry, I'll help you clean it. It's very common for the women here to clean for me without being asked. Bring me food they cooked or cook for us in my room. My current girlfriend, after she, um, she had swept the floor for me, I told her thank you. And she said, of course, my love, it's my duty. I really hope that these women are just playing the long game. and 
thinking that a woman is just supposed to fall over herself to serve a man, and that's what's seen as feminine to these people, is what is irksome. Like literally being born a woman is what makes us need to serve them. They really believe that they are little miniature kings and that they are deserving. That is the reason why they go to these countries so that they could get patriarchy on a budget because that is basically what they're doing. They know that they actually have to treat women with a little bit more respect in the United States. And that what they're doing in these countries is egregious. Okay, now some of the comments. It's not just the Philippines. In most of Asia, women seem to enjoy being women. This is unlike the West where most women want to be men. All right. Um, Asian women are some of the most feminine women. I think Asian culture is more feminine in general. Okay. Femi uh, Philippines is on another level um, than any other Asian country. Agreed. Also amazing lovers. When people talk about Asia as if they're not different cultures and countries that are completely different, it's wild to me. That's why I kind of put a um, an emphasis on Asian women, because like what kind of Asian? Korean, Chinese, um, uh, Indian, there's all kind of countries. Oh, anyways, you guys know that they're probably not doing any research other than Asia Y'all go ahead, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment. Okay, so I saw this Reddit in the PP Bro subreddit. And I'm just kind of scrunching up my face. Do Asians typically call themselves Asian or do they describe themselves from their country of origin? That's why I'm like, is this real? I don't know. But this man says he's 39, very fit, 5'9", and he's going abroad. He says, well, my story isn't new. I'm pretty sure you've heard all of this from other Redditors. Just like everyone, it is extremely hard here in the West to find marriage material woman, find a marriage material woman. I live in Arkansas, where you really have to be a Southerner to date someone. Arkansas is the number one in divorce rate in the nation. Things I don't get is that I see a, I see fat slobs looking men here able to get slim, get slim and women. What? Yes, slim women. Um, I guess it's all about money and height from my observation in Arkansas. I have seen illegal immigrants that are married and they survive with their wives and with very decent or low income. They support each other and money. Um, they support each other and money, if not about life. I, I don't get that one. I have dated an illegal immigrant from Mexico when I used to live in Albuquerque, but now I live in Arkansas. She didn't care about my job when I was making low income. Here in the U.S., you got to be white, six feet, have money and resources. The requirements are high. They literally repeat that. They just keep repeating that. I can get married right away if I go to Asia because I have no problem getting Asian women. I just have a thing for Latinas. I'm currently dating some some outside of Arkansas. She is white, but likes Asian guy. However, I am not attracted to her physically, but I like her personality. I work out in the gym, practice kickboxing and et cetera, but she doesn't get into physical activities. She has sciatica problems. Stuff like this could lead me into um, a burden to carry. I have a female friend from Missouri. She said she will try to find me a part-time Columbia, find me a part-time Columbia. And it is if I travel with her and her husband to find a good woman, should I take on that? Number one, that was challenging to read, but basically his height and going to the gym are his personality. And that's all I got from him is that his height and that that's all they believe is money, that all of these people say the exact same thing. He is absolutely right and that we have seen this this um, story before because they all say the same thing, no matter if, you know, their race, ethnic, ethnicity, country of origin, they pretty much say the same thing. But what is odd is that the very first comment that I saw, it had he sprinkled in a little bit of common sense. He says, Ditch the white chick. You're not attracted to her. She's only a friend and you should make that crystal clear. It's good for the spirit to be honest. 
He says, I'm hanging out with her because of bed comforts. But what if I failed in Columbia trip? Then I won't have anybody for me. It's already hard in Arkansas. They love to use women, yet they get upset when women have a body count more than one. It's very odd. The person then said, I see your dilemma. All I will say is that I had a similar friends with benefits and I liked her personality so much that I really wanted a relationship to work out. Eventually, I realized I was being selfish because although that girl was happy with the friends with benefits situation, I could tell she wanted more and I couldn't give that to her. Dude, they always want more. Friends with benefits um, is really something women can do without becoming attached. I, I am very surprised to see someone with a modicum of sense in this form. I'm just being honest with you. Okay, that man mentioned Col Columbia, despite the fact that he misspelled it. Now, I want to just bring you this one. Drug with anesthesia while working remote in Columbia. I'm sharing this experience because it might help uh, other digital nomads use their heads and stay safe while working remotely in a foreign country. Let me preface this by saying I'm Colombian by birth and speak perfect Spanish. I live abroad. Despite this, I was drugged with anesthesia and robbed while in Medellin. On a recent remote work trip to Colombia, I went to Medellin and linked up with a close friend I met in Brazil. Um, a year, I'm sorry, I met a year earlier in Rio de Janeiro. We survived months in Brazil without a scratch, other than a horrible bout of COVID and some run-ins with corrupt police. In Medellin, I worked in I worked in the daytime out of co-working spaces and cafes. We link up in the evenings and ride around on city, ride around the city on motorbikes and find stuff to do. One day we went to see a street soccer tournament block party in the north of the city. We met two girls we kept in touch with, but Medellin being Medellin, we were skeptical if we should see them again. We asked local friends if they could find out where these girls were known for, were these girls known for doing their thing. The thing as in drugging and robbing. This is sadly common in Colombia, especially in Medellin, where foreigners with money are a popular target, especially as the city has become a haven for digital nomads. The most common drug used is scopolamine, which can leave you with severe psychiatric after effects, including psychosis and in some cases schizophrenia. We vetted the girls and decided it was fine. So we saw them again, let our guard down, and that's when it happened. Somewhere along the evening, they slipped anesthesia into our drinks, put us to sleep, and we woke up the next day in a random empty apartment. No idea whose place that was, even to this day. They laid us both down in the same position on our sides, mouth hanging off the edge of the bed to reduce our chances of choking in our sleep. It was pure luck that none of the other substances we had in our system reacted negatively or compounded into an overdose especially as I've been reading more and more headlines of tourists in Medellin being found dead in their hotel rooms from overdoses or and sus um, suspected robberies. Happy to share more, but moral of the story, say stay, stay safe while working remotely abroad, even if you're comfortable and think you know the place. Update. I'll share one other quick anecdote. Despite being robbed, I was able to get all of my money back, we may complain about banking culture in America, but goddamn, you'll be glad they exist when they refund you thousands of stolen money. My buddy wasn't so lucky. Colombian banks don't care if the thieves leave you in debt. Also, while my, while my entire net worth was stolen with one fell swoop of an iPhone, later on, I was able to track down the thieves. Here's how it went. They created a Rappi account food delivery using some of my personal details, including an email address they locked me out of. I got my email account back, hacked their Rappi account, and found their real names, government ID numbers, home address, apartment unit, and even photos of what their front door looked like. I gave all this info over to the police when filing the report. Nothing was done. <laughs> if I was half as bad of a person as they are, you can imagine what could be done with that information. These PP bros in these groups really think that these women over here are just fawning all over them and falling all over themselves because they're such wonderful people and they're just so feminine and this is just, you know, part of how they are. No, they out here clocking them. 
And, you know, if they get got, they get got. And we're just going to report on it. Anyways, you guys jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this. And don't forget to like, comment, and share.